Hello everybody and welcome back to Hearts of Iron, where, there we go, didn't fade in the way I was expecting, but okay, I guess that is fine. We are currently working on getting the Carpathian Socialist Union here ready to go, and that will be just fine, that'll happen soon enough. We're going to be justified on that in just four days, so that's wonderful, that is a lot of troop movements. No wonder the game's a little laggy. That's insane. Well, the Allies were just recently mobilized to war, so they're all going home right now, I guess. So that is what they're up to. Now, we've currently generated 35.2% world tension. And we need to keep that number fairly low and low-key, shall we say. However, I'm thinking about when we want to start justifying against Yemen. This would take 185 days. Okay, justification for conquering North Transylvania is finished, and we're going to do exactly that and conquer North Transylvania. That'll generate 1% war, war, or world tension, rather. That's fine. We're okay with this. These guys are part of the common turn, so we should, in theory, be completely safe doing this. Yes? Yes. Greater Portugal has war goals against them, huh? Probably should have checked that. We might have been able to push that for them. Regardless, we're going to make our way on in over here. It may take a little bit of time. I do see they've got some forts built up. We might have to destroy their forts first before we can progress, but it looks like we're doing okay. So that's wonderful. This really should be kind of a fire and forget sort of war. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, the other question is, when are we going to go after Saudi Arabia here, and Kazakhstan as well? Hang on a moment. Republican Italy is not... The United States. Did they leave the faction, or did they get kicked out of the faction? We can't really get to them, so we can't really take advantage of this. Okay, we're going to allow all of our allies in the faction to come on in. That's fine. How can we use this to our advantage? Well, if we were to fight the Allies, the US would not be part of that in theory, unless they rejoined the Allies, which they can do. They've gone up a little bit in their fascism, but honestly, not very much. I would guess... The United Kingdom has a very bad opinion of United States. They must have gotten kicked from the faction by the UK then. Who actually, their fascism is growing a little bit, even further. That's great for us. It's still three years away from their election. So it could still be a democratic victory if they really focus on that. We'll keep an eye on it. It seems to be naturally going fascist. So hopefully that continues to be the case. Republican Italy. Are they a supervised state of the US? Yeah, so if we were to declare on them, that would not be great. Because we'd have to fight the U.S. I wonder if the U.S. is going to make their own faction. We'll keep an eye on it. I'm not sure yet how we can take advantage of this situation. But that does substantially weaken the Allies. I think the Allies are still too strong for us to effectively fight. And too many fronts. But if the U.S. creates their own faction and maybe takes a couple people like the Russian Federation with them, that'd be fantastic. Which, they're a supervised state, right? They have a truce with the U.S. Hang on. They were released as a supervised state at some point. So, I think they're fairly unlikely to leave the Allies in that case. Fascinating. So we're waiting until this election to attack Korea. We do have an unassigned infantry division here, and that infantry division will go into, I think, this army will be fine. This factional change is definitely important, though. I just don't yet know how we're going to handle it. So the real question is, what can we do with this?
This does have a substantial change to the landscape. Who all is affiliated with the U.S.? I mean, we have military access, obviously. They're guaranteeing the independence of the Republic of China. They have a truce with a whole bunch of nations right now. Republican Italy, State of Japan, Philippines, Republic of Cambodia, and Republic of Laos is their sphere of influence. Japan is the potential threat there other than the U.S. Do I think that we could beat Japan in its current state? Yes. Okay, there's that capitulation. Now, I don't believe we actually want any territory here. No. So what we want to do is we want to just puppet them. Like so. That'll only be 0.4%. So that's really not bad. Okay. So that's fantastic. They're now part of integrated Brazil. And this army needs somewhere to go. What do we suppose the odds are that the U.S. declares on us? Low. Very low. What did they do to the U.K. to make them kick them out, I wonder? All we can see here is that the United Kingdom has a very bad opinion of the United States. We can't see why. I suppose we could tag into the U.K., and just investigate what they did. Like, that's not really going to give us any relevant info, right? In theory. All we're going to do is take a look at the breakdown of the opinion. I'm just curious what the U.S. even did to the U.K. So, I'm going to make a save here in case we accidentally break anything. I'm going to do it. Let's make a save. And then let's tag... What would they be? U.K.? UK does not seem to be a valid tag. Okay, tag, maybe England, so ENG. That's what it is in, like, Europa. Yes, okay, so it's ENG. Fantastic. So all we want to look at here is we go in here, minus 100, simply because of generated world tension, which, yeah, if we look up here, the United States has generated 127% world tension. And also Warplane Red. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. We're just going to tag back to Brazil. There we go. Interesting. So it's literally just the World Tension and the Warplane Red. Okay. Well, we'll proceed here. And for right now, we're currently chilling. Let's take a look at timings. So, we'll be able to attack Korea in a little over two years. That's a while in terms of Hearts of Iron. This is going down on a monthly basis. Okay. So, do we actually want the state of Yemen? There is oil there. So the answer is yes, we do actually want to annex the state of Yemen rather than puppet them. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit higher in terms of the world tension. The question is, does that tension matter? And that's a difficult choice. Are these guys ready to launch their invasion? They're taking attrition here. Uh, let's go into the supply areas map mode. Yeah, they would be. We need to be working on our naval base in British Somaliland. So where are our naval bases at? I think I passed them. Naval bases. British Somaliland. We need to work on that so that we're not taking attrition here. That becomes a top priority for right now. And I do think we wait until these guys have full supplies. I think that'll be important. So we'll give it a little while at peace. That'll allow us to bank up some manpower, as well as work a bit on our recruitments here, which is important. Remember, this is going to be 44,000 manpower, 46,000 manpower, actually, that we're going to need here. In not very long, 
28 February. We're not going to quite have enough for that. So this is still going to keep us at zero manpower. And we don't need manpower for reinforcement, but and that's fine. We're definitely going to work on getting this naval base up because that is very, very important. So we're playing nice with the allies still, even despite their substantial weakening here. I don't think we can attack either of these effectively. If Mexico had left the allies... But they're doing absolutely fine with all of the members of the allies, I think. Well, actually, we can't see. We can just see that they're in a, a faction. But, uh... I don't think they've generated much world tension. No. They've not generated much world tension at all. In fact, none. Zero world tension. Okay. So I think it's pretty unlikely that they get kicked out. I think it's very unlikely that the Russians get kicked out. The more likely thing there is that their communism or fascism grows. And we'll just wait and see which one is going to get more effective there. We're in full Cold War mode at this point. And nobody wants to pull the trigger here, I think. Republic of Cambodia. They're a U.S. protectorate, right? Yes. These guys are not... But they are guaranteed by the state of Japan. Now, the state of Japan is a U.S. supervised state. So here's the question. If we attack Siam and the state of Japan joins because they've guaranteed, can they pull in their protectorate? Or are they on their own? That I don't know. That would be definitely very interesting to find out. So we've got these four, or rather these two. I expected four. Oh, these two are a couple days behind, I guess. I'm going to deploy them now just to get them on roughly the same schedule. Okay, so these guys, they're going to be deployed out over to, I think, this army is fine. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to draw an order with that tool. 59. Okay, I'm going to actually move them over to here. We need 66 here. So, 37 is the one that we're filling up. That is absolutely fine. And as far as production goes, I'm reasonably pleased. We're still a little bit short on steel. And actually a little bit short on chromium as well. But we are expecting, as some of this comes online, those shortages to lessen, if not go away. Turkey, are you still guaranteed by England? Yes, you are. That may not actually be a thing, though, if England gets taken over by fascism. So we're going to set up a defensive line here. And we're going to assign all of these units to it. All 24. There we go. Their mission is to offensive line simply to, like, this state for now. I want to get across this straight if we can, but they're going to make their way over, and that is completely fine. What is the supply limit looking like over here? 51, that should be sufficient. Sounds good. Oh, we have an agent that can be recruited. Fantastic. Commando, seducer. What I'm really looking for is someone who's good at spreading fascism. Unfortunately, none of these really are the case, so we could go for a double agent and linguist, or a tough commando. Honestly, I think a tough commando is the way to go. Okay, and we're going to put her on... Actually, we're going to build an intel network in the UK. I think it's very important right now. That we ensure that this fascism, which is still growing, that's up to 52% from, I believe it was at 51 before. We want to make sure that they go fascist in 1967. That's going to be the long game there. And the question then is, what becomes of the ally faction at that point? Maybe the U.S. saw the writing on the wall and bailed, but I think they got kicked. I think they got kicked from the faction because the U.K. has minus 100 opinion of them. 
What happens if the Allies declare on the U.S.? What is our game plan? Invite the U.S. to our faction. That would be the game plan. The United States is likely to accept fascist pressure, minus 1,000. Okay. What does that mean? Just that they think that they're susceptible to fascism, or is that a national spirit that they have right now? I mean, if we get them into our faction, that kind of counts as conquest, right? Kind of. Like, in terms of a federation sort of thing. <laughs> I don't know. At that point, the question becomes, what next for this series? Because this went off the rails a long time ago. This went quite off the rails. So I'm not sure exactly what that would mean. It'd be fascinating. Do I think the Allies are likely to declare on the US? Honestly, they could. Would they win against us plus the United States? I don't know. I honestly don't know who would win that. It'd be a tough fight either way. The core issue is that we're sitting at zero manpower. In fact, we're at negative manpower because of all of our garrison units. That would be the core issue that we'd have. We can run a region-wide industrial integration. Let's go ahead and do that, and let's make another synthetic refinery somewhere. And is that up over here? That Oh, we can make several things over here, actually. We can make one here, and we can make one here. Both of those are fantastic. And one here. Now, two of those are in our subject nation. We can also make one over here, and over here, and over here. That's pretty great. I'm very happy about that. We can maybe make one... We can make two over here. Nice. We're going to do exactly that. That will help our fuel gains pretty dramatically. We can make one over here as well, apparently. We have an exiled division? Oh, okay. Sure. That's fine. They'll get out of there soon enough. So we're going to prioritize constructing those that are not in our allied nations as top priority. That's probably enough, right, in terms of oil gain? Maybe. That's going to be 168 fuel per. And the reason we're building these rather than civilian factories is, of course, because we want to be domestic in our production. We don't want to be relying on foreign powers that might be at war with us soon. So this definitely has changed the landscape. Right? Very dramatically. This guy is rooting out resistance right now. Do we need rooting out resistance anymore? Are we good? I feel like we're good. Where is this guy right now? Is he down over here? Doesn't say, actually, where he is. But I feel like we're good on resistance levels for now. So we're going to make our way over here. And we're going to build an intel network in the US. We're kind of going for a bit of a power play here, honestly. So we're going to get that started. That's going to be a bit of a long-term play between the UK and the US. We're going to try to bounce the two off of each other. Ideal scenario for us, I think, is that we get the United States into our faction without... without being at war with the Allies. Now, this, this war plan against Turkey is unlikely to happen soon. We're currently down to 34.4% tension. 
and we want to let that drop for a little bit yet. Changing by minus half a percent per month, that's fine. We're going to continue to allow that to drop, and we're going to let our spy network in the U.S. build its way up. I'm also interested in seeing the fascism there appears to be holding its ground, but not really growing. In the UK, it does appear to be growing, right? Well, it hasn't moved yet since I last looked. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that. And once our Intel networks grow large enough, then that'll be fine. Now we're still working on the Argentine Republic over here. They are up to 38%. And... I mean, 5% non-aligned. Yeah, the UCR is still likely to win, but that's still seven, or rather, three years away. So that's okay. We do have exiled divisions over here, apparently. Why are you just chilling here, bud? I see. Don't include that. And then we'll send these three divisions over to this army. Minimum divisions, 56. Okay. That's interesting. So, I guess I didn't grab those correctly. We'll just do that. Right? Right. Okay. So, this guy is currently exiled. And, uh... Why don't you come on over to here? And then from there, you can get to your correct location. <laughs> Fantastic. I feel like we owned this, but we might have we might have temporarily owned it and then given it up in a peace deal and I just didn't notice. It doesn't actually matter. There's no there's no resources here. The only thing we'd get from it is a tiny amount of recruitable population. So that is fine. We are gaining 22.34 thousand recruitable population in our states now, so that has come up pretty dramatically. That now means that it only takes roughly two months to get enough recruitable population to recruit these four. So I think we should be reasonably positive at this time in our recruitment and our manpower. Which would be great. I'm very, very pleased with that. How are we doing with our logistics over here? Okay, it's coming along, but slowly. We're up to 17 here. We need to be at 25. So we're going to continue to work on that. That is still working at top speed, so that's completely fine. We're going to be finishing up a lot of these constructions fairly soon. And once this reaches 25, which is going to be level... Let's see here. What, three more levels in total? This will be 20, 23, 26. So yeah, three more levels in total. Then we'll be able to move this back down the prio. So that'll be absolutely fine. We have a lot of things queued up. There's no doubt about it. Oh, we should visit our land fort queues over here because this one no longer needs to be queued. This one actually no longer needs to be queued. These do over this way. Technically, this one does have a small border here. And then we continue to head down over... Wait. We control this. We don't queue this. I need to unqueue all of these. Okay. Unqueue these? I need to look at these border lines. I need to look at the faction lines, is what I need to look at. Okay. Who controls this? I believe, yeah, they're in the Allies faction. So, that'll be fine. In that case, as soon as the autosave finishes, we are going to then construct here, 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 and here. And this is all Allies as well, right? Yeah, so we need to construct something like this. That looks correct. And then over here, we need to construct like so. All the way down over here. 
And these are very unlikely to be constructed, right? There we go. That should do the trick, in theory. So we'll have that ready to go. Hopefully. Eventually. <laughs> it is, however, time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode... Ooh, four divisions from these guys. Next episode, we are going to continue working on getting these last few areas dealt with. I feel like there was another one that was supposed to be over here. 26... 56. I might have messed something up here. We'll investigate that, if I remember, in the next episode. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.